me? For real? You can call from the Bahamas using Revboy's prepaid home phone service and prepaid chat cards for much less. Hey girl, are you ready? To you get free unlimited on-island calls, voicemail, and no internet service or ID is required. Hello? Revboy's prepaid home phone service and prepaid chat cards. Hey, <laughs> Staying in touch never sounded so good. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, a man is killed and left along the side of the street during the early morning hours. The Christian Council calling for alternative sentencing. The government finding new ways to make homes more affordable for Bahamians. Plus, get your kids to play a new tune at a music summer camp this year. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney, and MB12 Weekend starts right now. Welcome once again to MB12. The nation's murder count jumped to 55 overnight after a man was found stabbed to death less than a half mile away from the Wolf Road Police Station. Superintendent Theophilus Cunningham told MB12 that the victim's body was found on the side of the street. This male was lying just below the auto sales, auto sales sign situated on Wolf Road. Cunningham adds that police were called to the scene at around 12.55 a.m. after a tip was phoned into the police control room. He added that details about this latest murder are still sketchy and police still do not know what led to this incident. Cunningham is asking anyone with information to contact police. We're appealing to members of the public who may have any information regarding this incident to please contact our emergency lines at 919-322-3816 or 322-3333. Meantime, this is the second murder to occur over the holiday weekend. Just after dawn on Labor Day, a woman's body was found along the Montague shoreline. Police say she had been stabbed to death. Police have also yet to make an arrest in that case. While in light of a crime rate that continues to foster a fear of crime, especially in the nation's capital, executives at the Bahamas Christian Council are calling for an increase in alternative sentencing programs. Our Jasmine Bonamy has more in this report. While there are currently several alternative sentencing programs operating throughout the country, officials at the Bahamas Christian Council insist it's simply not enough as crime and prison overcrowding is on the rise. Father James Palacios is leading the call for alternative sentencing and says it's one of many solutions needed to tackle crime. They are the ones who are going to come out and eventually be, pose some problems for us if we don't find a way to reorient them. And in this vein, I call upon more of our churches to do more with respect to partnering with the courts, especially in the area of alternative sentencing. And in this vein, I call upon more of our churches to do more with respect to partnering with the courts, especially in the area of alternative sentencing. During a trip to New Providence earlier this year, popular U.S. Judge Joe Brown suggested to Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson that the government should look at alternative ways to deal with nonviolent offenders. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage has in the past noted that prison is overcrowded because of the many nonviolent offenders. Palacios says by keeping nonviolent offenders outside prison, it can also alleviate overcrowding. We have to be a forgiving community, but not only a forgiving community, but we need to facilitate the re-entry of some of these people into society. For example, young man, you've been in prison, you learn carpentry. Yes. We, tell the, we tell our churches, we tell our congregation, John is one of us. What can we do to help John to become rehabilitated? I will take John one day on my construction site, another person will take them. When you look, a year would have passed. That person becomes rehabilitated. We have to work preventatively as well as with respect to doing some what I call ambulance work. 
As mentioned earlier, there are several alternative sentencing programs being operated by organizations like Teen Challenge and the Lead Institute. Both focus on young male offenders. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. And we'll have a little more from the Christian Council a little later in news. But first, it's been three years since cable and wireless communications took over at the formerly government-owned telecoms monopoly prior to the takeover. And for a short time afterwards, the Bahamas Communications and Public Officers Union staunchly opposed the sale. However, the body has been pretty quiet for a while. That is until today. While the renegotiations between the government and cable and wireless executives to take back the majority stake in the company seems to have stalled, BCPOU President Bernard Evans says the union and its members are disappointed because it would have hoped by now that the government would have already taken back control of BTC. The PLP campaigned heavily prior to regaining governance that taking back a controlling interest in the telecom monopoly would be a priority of the government. However, despite meetings between both parties, there's not been a resolution. I am extremely, extremely disappointed. One would think that by this time, you know, all that we, we start, I started to talk about, all of the inner workings that we have found, I mean, it is blatant. The rape that is going on with, with the principles of cable and wireless and what they continue to do. The BCPOU is also upset that the government has not considered making the union a part of the renegotiations to buy back the majority stake in the company. We were not invited to any. All right. Uh, we, we have seek and will continue to seek at least a meeting with the, the government representatives on BTC's board. And hopefully, we will we'll get to that next week. Uh, but no, the answer to your question is no. If the government would unveil their findings, surely, then the smallest child can see, Stevie Wonder can see, that this is, it was a bad deal, it needs to be overturned, and I am very, very upset. We, we are tired, and we thought by now the government would have taken the 2% back by now. The union is questioning the bonuses CWC executives have been receiving as well as the financial management of the company and what happened to the $60 million cable and wireless met in BTC's bank account when it took over three years ago. Evans said if the union doesn't get the answers it's looking for soon, it will take action. That is why we came to you all now with this press conference, putting the nation on notice now, that we are tired and we have had enough. Uh, I've, I've taken the, the, uh, the diplomatic road. Uh, I've taken a lot of hits from my own executives who said that I've been a little bit too passive, all right? But I was, I was allowing the, 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 the time frame for them to get what they needed to get done and, and, and bring answers to us. And, and it hasn't been forthcoming, and so we got to take matters in our own hands now. And so it begins today. Well, President of the Bahamas Financial Services Union, Teresa Mortimer, is weighing in on the controversial immigration policy announced by Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell in the House of Assembly earlier this year. In March, Mitchell announced a new work permit policy that would give Bahamians more jobs by making it more difficult for foreign workers to be granted permits. Mortimer says with foreign workers dominating the financial services sector, she fully supports that stance as she says it will make it easier for Bahamians to find work in that field. So I don't support the foreign worker. I don't support the fact that immigration uh, has to be given out 20 permits to the financial sector because the problem is no one checks. My, I often say, how do I gain experience if you don't give me a chance to work? According to Mortimer, foreign workers continue to hold high positions in financial institutions, but she insists there are often jobs that Bahamians are more than qualified to fill. What's most distressing, she says, is the fact that Bahamian laws are not enforced to prevent many of these issues. Yes, you may need one or two, other, but you say you need five and six? I don't think so. Under the Bahamians, are, we, we have been under arrest for so long, but the problem is, where do we go for help? The, we go, we, and we need help because the, the first help for us would be to enforce the law of the country. I say to, go, I say to the government, just this week at the Department of Labor, find the employer for not showing up. You, you need to make an example. Because until you make an example of somebody, nothing, there's no, nothing is going to be happening for you. And as the union celebrates its 10th anniversary, Montemore says it will continue to tackle issues like this one and many more plaguing the financial services sector.